Hey guys, it's Cece, and welcome to another 10 in 10 recommendations video. 10 in 10 is a series that I have just recently started on my channel where I recommend 10 books to you on a particular theme in under 10 minutes. This is only the second video I've ever done, and I am already super enthusiastic about this idea. I think these videos are fun to make, they're easy to make, and they're easy to consume. So today I'm going to be talking about 10 books about queer adults, and I will be recommending them in just a second, but first I have to talk about the fact that this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning platform with thousands of classes in a ton of different subjects. It is a super amazing resource, and premium membership gets you unlimited access to every single class on the site, plus that premium access works out to be less than $10 a month. Today I wanted to recommend a class called Unlocking Your Potential, Five Exercises to Build Creative Confidence by Emma Gannon. Like I said, this video series has been a creative process, it's a new thing that I'm trying that I'm really enjoying, and I sometimes have a hard time getting out of my creative rut. I want to be creative, but I can't figure out how to be. But building my own creative confidence is something that allowed me to create this new series, so it would be really great if you wanted to check out that class or one of the many, many, many others that Skillshare hosts. The first 1,000 people who click the link in my description are going to get their first two months of Skillshare Premium Membership absolutely for free. If you want to unlock your creative potential or maybe take other classes, I would really recommend Skillshare as a platform. They are such an amazing company. Please check out the link in my description. Now, I still have a lot to cover in this video, so let's talk about 10 books with queer adult protagonists. The first book that I wanted to recommend is Real Life by Brandon Taylor. This is adult literary fiction and was only released earlier this year. It takes place over a long weekend in a midwestern town, and it follows a gay black man from Alabama who has moved to this unnamed midwestern town to attend grad school in biochemistry, and he is surrounded by extremely white peers, so he's trying to figure out how to fit in in a STEM degree as a person of color, as a queer person. It's it's also very much about Wallace's experiences with grief. It is a beautiful book. There are so many emotional moments and things that hit me so hard. It's one of my faves of the year. Please read it. Next, I wanted to recommend a horror book, The Luminous Dead by Caitlin Starling. This is sci-fi horror. It is set on a foreign planet and it is about a cave expedition gone terribly wrong. We only have two characters. Uh, basically for the entire book we have our narrator and we have the person who is above ground in the cave directing the main character. And as Gaia gets deeper into the cave, the more she starts to think that the person on the other end of her headset is not telling her the truth and the more she starts to feel like something sinister may be going on. This has a queer girl protagonist. Um, both of the women, I believe, are described as women of color. This is a super creepy book. It kept me up all night. I loved it. Next up, Nevada by Imogen Binney. This is also sort of literary fiction. It's also a meandering journey. It follows a young trans woman living in New York City and she gets fired and dumped on the same day, so she decides to steal her now ex-girlfriend's car and go on a cross-country journey of, like, self-exploration for why bad things keep happening to her. This is a messy queer book. It is about messy queer feels, which is a particular passion of mine. It's definitely much more for those who are interested in character development over plot. Not a ton happens in this book, but you learn so much about Maria and the other characters. Plus it has a sapphic trans woman as a main character, so. Next, I want to talk about An Absolutely Remarkable Thing by Hank Green. Sadly, I don't have my copy with me right now. As soon as I read it, I lent it to a friend because I have to share it with everyone possible. A bunch of people don't know that this has a queer protagonist. It does! There is a bisexual woman, our main character, April. April is kind of a messy artist who recently got out of school. She's kind of struggling with what she wants to do in her life, and then she discovers this statue that turns out to be part of a global phenomenon and maybe even more than that. And because April is the first person to spot one of these statues, she is rocketed into fame. I was just talking about how I love messy queer books. This is another one that absolutely qualifies. I related to April so much as a millennial who is done with college and isn't fully sure what to do with my life. Plus, as the book begins, the main character is in a relationship with a woman. It is a funny book about pop culture and popularity online. I love it. It's one of my favorite books that I've ever read in my life, read it. The next book that I have is historical fiction, and that is Cantoras by Carolina de Robertis. This is set in Uruguay starting in the 70s, but it's set across about 30 years of time, and this has 
five main characters, all of whom are Uruguayan women who are queer, who find each other, and they find this sort of abandoned island where they can go to be themselves. Because at this point in time, Uruguay was under a dictatorship, a especially anti-LGBTQIA plus dictatorship. It's a brilliantly sad book, but it's also one about community and the queer community of the past, which is something I'm really invested in reading about. It will make you cry, I almost guarantee it, but it's brilliant. The other historical fiction that I have is Almost Like Being in Love by Steve Kluger. This is an underrated read that I don't talk about enough. It was one of the first queer books I ever read, so this is set in 1978 and 1998, and it follows two boys, a nerd and a jock who fell in love in high school and then broke up, and then 20 years later one of them realizes that the reason he's never been fully happy is that he still misses his boyfriend from high school, so he sets off to find them. This is a multimedia book, so there are some portions where you read, like, paragraphs of description and dialogue. Sometimes they're, like, briefs, like, lawyers make up, sometimes they are checklists. It's a speedy read, it's a fun read, and it's an adorable relationship. Moving on back to a little bit of sci-fi, we have This Is How You Lose the Time War by Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. This is high concept time travel Romeo and Juliet kind of. And suffice it to say, in this book there is a time war going on, two factions are fighting, and there are two lead agents who are called Red and Blue. They are the lead agents of their respective sides, and they go back in time and change things to try to make their timeline the primary timeline. And this is about Red and Blue, who respect each other as professionals, and then start to send each other letters and fall for one another. It's one of the greatest books ever written! I'm not being dramatic, that's absolutely a fact. If you can handle reading kind of intense sci-fi, like it's a little hard to get into, I would really recommend it because it's also one of the most romantic books I've ever read in my life. Next up, I have a short story collection, a short, short story collection, and that is Close to Spider-Man by Ivan E. Coyote. This is a super short collection of stories that are all about being a queer woman growing up in the Yukon. Ivany e. Coyote is non-binary, and I think that there are certain stories that you can read into that and you can start to sort of tell that it might not fully be about a queer woman, that it might just be a queer story in general, but every story is queer. It is breathtaking. It's a beautiful exploration of this small mountain culture. I loved reading it in June. Second to last, we have a romance book because this list needs at least one romance, and I wanted to recommend a newer romance book, Meet Cute Club by Jack Harbin. This is another one that I read in June. This is about a guy named Jordan who is super passionate about romance books. In fact, he runs his own book club, the Meet Cute Club, but Jordan's struggling because the book club is struggling, people keep leaving, and there's a new employee at his favorite bookstore who keeps kind of poking fun at him for reading grandma books. This has a black gay main character, and it is a male-male romance. It is absolutely adorable, like teeth achingly cute, and I feel like it's something that's going to appeal so much to people who read a lot of romance because there's so much passion there that Jordan has for books and for his favorite paranormal romance series. Adorable. I loved it. The last book that I want to recommend is An Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. This is a sci-fi book set in a far-flung future where everyone is on these huge ships traveling across the galaxy, but the ships are arranged much like the Antebellum South. And we are following someone named Aster who grew up on the lower decks, but her medical ability allows her to travel more up deck than people usually do. Aster is an own voices intersex main character who is more trans masculine. There are also a ton of other queer side characters. There's another narrator who is trans feminine. There's queer romance, there's revolution. It's a really, really excellent book about race, gender, class, all of the things. I loved it. Okay, that's it. Those are the 10 books that I wanted to recommend in today's 10 in 10 video. If there are books about queer adults that you really love that I didn't talk about, and there are many, please let me know down in the comments below. People, you can check out everyone else's comments, get some more recommendations, and if you really loved this, maybe I will do a second part. Thank you again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please check out the link in my description, and thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another one very soon. Bye!